So in this video, I just want to cover a few things that we found at midterm that were problems or things that need to be tweaked or maybe uh, some tips on how to make uh, importing these models to Unreal Engine easier. And for the remainder of the semester, we're going to spend our time making these models and these interactions, these VR worlds, as good as we possibly can. So that's going to take a little bit of remodeling, re-updating, generating textures and materials. Um, and one thing we found right off the bat was some people were working in Unreal Engine 4.18, some were working in 4.17 or .2 or .1. And we have some compatibility issues with uh, making sure that we are always up to date. So if you're working currently in 4.17.2, that's fine, that would work. If you're working in something earlier, you can update and open in 4.17.2. Uh, if you're working in 4.18, we have to make sure that the, the computers that are running the VR stuff is, are also up to 4.18, so we have to update those. So uh, what I'd recommend is if you want to add a version here under the library, add a version, you can install 4.18, but from this point forward, I would say no one should update beyond 4.18. That way we can just kind of make it the cutoff and finish so that everyone has an up-to-date version and we're compatible across the board. And close this one. You can see I'm working in 4.17 right now. Uh, the next thing, I want to jump over to a problem that people were having uh, and cover actually a few problems along the workflow. So one, we were doing collisions, right? So sometimes we were unable to collide our teleport because some bounding box in the, the VR world was blocking it. So here in Rhino, I've just made a, like a really simple uh, scene. And what I want to do is to come back in and add a navigation layer, something of my own making. So here you can see, I'll select these, I'll just move them out of the way. I made these planes that will actually sit right on top of the surface. So these are double surfaces, but the planes in Unreal will be made completely invisible. This will let us have our base geometry with no collision and our navigation planes with a blocking collision. So here I've modeled them, and one thing you'll likely find is, hey, I've already spent all this time in 3D Studio Max, and I've unrolled and unwrapped specific elements, and now I need to come back in and add my navigation planes. Well, for me, the easiest way to do that is probably just to make sure that they align. They should be in the same spot, and if I rotate them negative 90 degrees on the X, they should fall right into the same place. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is come back to Rhino. These navigation planes, I'll select them. I will export them, uh, save them as a nav.fbx, save that, I'll overwrite mine as I tested it out, say OK. And then back into, uh, let's see, 3D Studio over here. So I want to import my navigation mesh, and to do that I'll just go to File Import, I'll get my nav, open that, and I want to make sure that I'm here on Autodesk Architectural. Some people had problems using uh, the media and entertainment. It wasn't bringing through the layers, which we have over here. So we're going to make sure that we're on Revit Architectural Importer. Say OK. Here are my uh, planes. And before we go too far, I'm just going to take them. And I'm going to attach all of these planes together. And I will rotate them by right-clicking the Rotate tool here, negative 90 degrees. Now what you'll see is they're not quite in the right place, right? They're floating above the model. Now, if I export everything all at once, um, I can keep the kind of bounding box of the information, and our rotation should be the same. But also because these items are named in the FBX file, they'll be updated in uh, 3D Studio Max. So we don't want to change um, all of our objects. We just want to add our navigation. So how are we going to get these things to line up? Right now they're they're pretty, you know, close as far as an XY, but you know, it's never going to work the way we want. What I want to do is use this three snap toggle here. So I can right click this and I've turned on just endpoints. So I'll turn on my snaps, I'll go to move, and then I'm going to hover over the corner here, the top corner. And you can see my move icon shows up. And if I'm outside of that, it's not a move icon, but once I hover over that box, it turns into a move. And I'll come down here and snap it right to the corner. Now I know that my navigation uh, objects are aligned with our base. In uh, Unreal Engine, we'll set them to invisible. But these also need to be, uh, let's turn snaps off and go back to our selection. These also need to be UV mapped. Um, so we're going to unwrap them. I'm going to open the UV editor, 
uh, one update here is they say uh, mapping, flatten mapping. I've been using it now without filling the holes. It seems like it's a little faster. Um, and it unwraps, you know, obviously these are super clean and simple. That's pretty easy. And another tip that was found is if you can right click the, this is the modifier. If I right click the modifier, I can copy it and I can right click and paste it. This keeps all the same information and then down here I can just move it to channel two. Move that and we're ready. So for this scene, I'm gonna export everything. So we're gonna just export and then let's see under my desktop, midterm fixes, this is just gonna be max to unreal. We'll save these, say okay. Uh, some of the textures is incompatible, not a big deal. And I'll jump over to Unreal. So this is uh, the Unreal Engine. You can see, I'll just miss this one. This is the, um, the teleport where we've been pulling things across. But here I'm just going to create a new level, uh, just a blank default level. It's not a big deal. Um, and I will want to import that new content. So let's do this the right way, make a new folder call this geometry and here I will import uh, my desktop midterm fixes max to unreal um, here's a few new updates right so we talked about uh, skeletal meshes we definitely do not want skeletal meshes auto generate collisions uh, that's fine we're gonna turn them off eventually and we'll build our own collisions for the navigation um, one big one, some people are having lots of problems with the generate light map UV. We do not want that. We've done that ourselves by generating channel one and channel two. Um, let's see, I think that's the only major one we need to change. Here in the scale, I know that I'm working in imperial units and I want to move to metrics, so I'll multiply by 3.54. Uh, down here, we can import textures and materials. Uh, that doesn't really matter because we are going to be building our own. Um, but it's fine, let's go ahead and import them. And let's make sure that this is combined meshes is turned off. Those are the kind of the critical points. No generating light masses, no combined meshes, no skeletal mesh. So we'll import, uh, no smoothing groups, that's fine. So I'll take uh, these objects and I'll bring them into the scene. Oh, they're really big. Um, there we go. You can see our double mesh there, that's because we have uh, the nav navigation object um, and the base are two separate objects. Uh, so let's go ahead and just check one of these. So the navigation object here, which maybe I can rename. Uh, let's rename this. This is nav. I'll rename this one to uh, columns. And then I'll rename this one to base, just to make it a little easier to use. So if I look here at the navigation object, I get the static mesh here under the details. I can double click that. And I can take a look at it here. Uh, what this lets me do is check my UVs. And thankfully, I only have channel zero, which is actually the channel one I made in uh, 3D Studio Max. And I have channel one. Uh, if you had imported your own geometry and you had Unreal make light, uh, UV light mass yourself, you'll have channels zero, one, and two and that will bring nothing but problems. The next thing we want to do is we know we want to collide with this, so we need to look at the collisions of this mesh. So let's turn on simple collisions. You can see I have a really big uh, facet here. It's kind of this um, polygon where it will block everything, uh, and ultimately I'll start teleporting high above the ground. So I want to turn on collisions and generate on auto convex collisions. So if I turn that on, I get this tab down here, and this is the baseline, 0.5 accuracy with 16 hulls. I'll apply that, it'll take a second, and as these navigations get more and more complicated, we might need more hulls, or we might need to generate separate ones. So we can generate navigation one, navigation two. Here what you see now are that the simple collisions, we're viewing simple collisions, the simple collisions are uniformly mapped around those objects. So by building it in kind of small chunks, we'll be able to have very clean collisions. We'll be able to have very clean collisions. So I'll save this. And I'll close. Um, here I have two materials. Let's just really quickly make a new material. 
uh, default. So my default material, I'm going to just cover this one more time. I'm going to get a three and left click. This will let me make this, uh, say, like a, a uh, I was going for a gray, somewhere around there. This is just a base color. Clicking on the base color here, I'm going to force it to be two-sided. Say save and close. <clears throat> so my base and my columns are both going to be my material default. That's a two-sided, just to make sure that my normals don't have any problems. And then I'm going to also, let's make a new material and call this navigation. The navigation material is just something that we want to turn transparent. So over here in the blend mode, we're going to say it's translucent. Uh, I'm going to get a 3 and a 1 by hitting 1 and left clicking, 3 and left clicking. I'm going to make the color of my completely transparent material just black. And then I'm going to set its opacity here to 0. And you can see there's no more sphere. If I go to a square, once it renders that, it's invisible. So I'll say save. I will close this. And when I select my navigation, uh, it still has its old name here, but it's renamed nav. I'm going to set its material right here to navigation. Then I'm going to come down a little bit further, and there's collisions. Default collision is fine. For our other objects, which I can get, the easiest way I know to do this is to come up and search for all static meshes. Um, so there's the default floor, which came with the level, and delete that. Um, this is the navigation, which I'll turn off. These other two objects, I want to come down under collision. I'm going to set this to no collision. What that will let us do is only use the navigation to collide. And as you can see, we can't see it. I'm going to increase my camera speed so we can zoom around pretty quickly. We cannot see those navigation edges. It's an invisible material, but it will still collide. Um, and let's go ahead and build the scene. Let's make sure that none of our UVs are overwrapped, overlapped and all the mapping is correct. It says, OK, it's going to build the light. Looks good. And no errors. Um, because we took the time to build it the right way in 3D Studio Max, um, we're not going to have any problems here. A couple other things that came up. People are saying, how do we add light? How do we control light? Over here on the lights, I can add a skylight, which will get rid of that sh kind of sharp contrast. I can even come in here. And I can change the intensity of that skylight if I want a, you know, a, a well-lit, bright scene or not. I can change the color of the skylight for some reason if we wanted some kind of a ephemeral effect. Maybe we could do a, a darker sky. Um, that's something you could do here. The other option here, if I come up into the world outliner, I will search for lights. There's my light source. And if I use the rotation commands with E, I can rotate the direction of that light. So it's not actually moving the sun in the sky, but it is moving the way the shadows fall. Now when I see that, you can see right here, it says this is a preview shadow because it needs to be rebuilt. So I'll build it one more time. <clears throat> All right, there we go. And I'll let the building of light, it's done. Now we have nice clean shadows. You know, these really strange spots where it kind of breaks through there. These, uh, these meshes were not high poly. You can see there's like some tearing of the faces, but that's not a big deal. Back to the content. I'm going to take my pawn, drop it in the scene. You can see how massive the world is compared to my pawn. So one idea that we had was to always try to bring in uh, a human scale. So if we put an empty character here, this is just an empty character. We can see how, how large the world is compared to that character. So let's slow down the camera so I can have some control here. So this capsule shape is about six feet tall in, in the world scale. Another way to look at this is under perspective. We can go to top, and I can zoom and pan around. So right now, uh, this level is probably, let's see, probably about 60 meters wide, so it's a very wide platform. And if I said if I wanted to look at the right side, I could get a gauge at how tall these things are. As I zoom in, it will snap to a meter size, and then later down to 10 centimeters, and I think I can even get it up. Oh, 10 centimeters is the smallest. So there's a way for me to check and see um, exactly how big my, my model is. So if I need to come in, you can see there's the, the pond or the player size is about this big. 
So maybe I want to take all of those static meshes, static meshes, one, two, three, and I'm going to reduce it by half. Uh, let's be smart about this and just lock this scale. That way I can do it as 0.5 and all will update at the same time. I'll move this back down so that my pawn starts down there. Go back to perspective. And now it's a little bit, say, I've updated my scale to be correct. All right, so there's a few things with that. One, uh, developing uh, navigation uh, geometry in Rhino, exporting that out to 3D Studio Max, and making sure that we use the snaps under this three to get the alignment just perfect. Um, also, copying and pasting the unwraps, which make things a little bit easier. Uh, once we do that, we can export these different pieces. And in Unreal Engine, uh, when we import something, we have to make sure, let's take the navs, that we're not generating UV maps, we are not combining meshes, we are not using skeletal meshes. With those simple changes, I think we'll have a little bit easier time generating our next pass at, at uh, VR Worlds. Hope it helps.